Welcome to The Better Human Show. I'm your host, Colin Stucker, a daily podcast to help you think better, live better, act better, become freer, demand more of yourself and the people around you so that you can make the world a better place. Get all the updates on The Better Human Newsletter, which is quickly moving to become a daily newsletter full of awesomeness, five minutes a day to make you a better human. Really proud of it. Spend four hours today to really hone in on the format. Let me know what you think. You can get that over thebetterhuman.co. And if you've been following along or listening for any period of time, I just want to say thanks. I appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. And I have so much to come. So I hope you'll join me on this journey. Today's topic is The Domesticated Human. It is from a book, but the subtitle, and I'm going to do my best to follow format every day now. I want you to get excited about tuning into the show. I want you to get excited about tuning into the newsletter. And I hope we can have a daily betterment relationship. It'll be great. Quote for the day from Scientific America. Lying is among the most sophisticated and demanding accomplishments of the human brain. Children have to learn to lie. People with certain types of frontal lobe injuries may not be able to do it. It's just an interesting thing to think about. And then we got a couple of news pieces here. This is from the Daily Better Human Newsletter, which I'm probably kicking off today with the first one, depending on when you hear this. I hope you will be doing a, you know, one a day and they can kind of launch together. But maybe you're hearing this news. And it's not in today's edition, it's in like a week ago's edition. So excuse me for not getting them matched up, but it will eventually be daily newsletter, daily podcast, everything released together, uniform, in conjunction, in unison. Here we go. Amazon has just announced it's going to be $10 for all deliveries from Whole Foods. All grocery delivery, which they were doing for free if you bought, I believe it was $49, is now going to have a flat $10 fee. I guess they figured out It's not that easy to deliver things with cars and people. And it's actually not really great in general for a lot of things. I think it's a waste of human time. I think it's a waste of resources. It's not great for the environment, even though like, you know, that's not really what I care about usually. Mostly because I think the environment narrative is wrong. It doesn't mean I don't care about the environment. I just don't care about the propaganda of the environment. But we'll save that for later. A Super Mario Brothers animated film is coming on 12 21 22 with a voice cast featuring Chris Pratt, Seth Rogen, Charlie Day, and other people I've never heard of. 12 21. Oh, I thought this was coming out this year. That's literally a year and a half, and they're already announcing it. Give me a break. And then one more in the news for the day or the week, depending on when you're listening to this. Democrats try to pass a $1 trillion infrastructure bill and a $3.5 trillion spending bill to inject dollars into the social safety net climate change, mitigation, and education. And then I have here in parentheses, hint, buy Bitcoin, get out of cash, and make sure you have your passports. Mostly because the the government is going to shite just because these politicians are completely out of their minds. They literally think they can just make money out of thin air and there's not going to be a cost to pay. And they don't care because the cost will come later when they're already out of office and they've already made their money and bought their yachts and their real estate and they have multiple passports and they can basically go anywhere in the world. Just a freaking joke. So that's the news for the day. Two more tips and or updates from the newsletter. Mind boggling. Almost 9 million Americans suffer from a behavioral disorder called trichotillomania which involves ripping one's own hair out. 90% of adult sufferers are actually women. Here's another one about bottled water. Not surprised. An environmental working group study found that 10 popular bottled water brands were contaminated with chemical pollutants, bacteria, and heavy metals. And then finally, to close out the new section, big tech censorship. Texas joins coalition supporting Florida ban on big tech censorship. Big tech censorship is reaching fever pitch levels. Those are two different articles that you can read more about in the daily newsletter over at thebetterhuman.co to join that. Now, today's big idea from a book. This is a long quote. I'm going to read it, so bear with me. From Bitcoin, Independence Reimagined. This is, again, uh, not even actually about Bitcoin. It's just about people and humanity. So tune in. This ability to lie to ourselves at scale is arguably our biggest weakness as well as our greatest strength. We've somehow managed to conquer the world by concurrently setting a trap for ourselves that we have already fallen into. Blindly following our leaders has rendered us under-equipped for detecting when we're being used. We've been domesticated. If the idea of domestication bothers you, you need to free yourself from your leash. This might be harder than you think, and you'll soon realize that you're tied to more than one of them. So is everyone else. 
Not listening to religious lunatics might be easy, but not buying into the idea of the nation state or even democracy is a stretch too far for most people. When you really think about it though, borders, laws, institutions, and ultimately money are just as intangible as Zeus, Thor, or Mordor. Only our common agreement of their existence makes them exist. Unlike trees, cows, and garbanzo beans, they could not exist outside of our minds. The fictitious nature of money in particular is vastly misunderstood. Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation and I care not who makes its laws. Amsel Rothschild allegedly said that. At the very top of each nation's food chain sits the entity controlling our money, the lifeblood of every society. So on The Better Human Show, you know that I am all about waking up thinking for yourself, critical thinking, being a skeptic, and using really a first principles approach to becoming a better human so that you can have more sovereignty and control over your life. That's the goal here. So listen, the goal here is for you. I want you to become better. I want you to think better, act better, and then become the walking epitome of awesomeness and betterment so that people around you, through osmosis of being around you and seeing you and observing you, they become better themselves. Monkey see, monkey do. That's human nature for better and worse. So if a group of better humans can rise up Accept the challenge that our modern environment is really messed up and it's really hard to thrive in it. Some of us are figuring out how to do that and we need to show as many others the way as possible. Only through individuals, lots and lots of better individuals that are sovereign, that have control and agency over their lives, will the world become a better place. We already see that the powers that be are already threatened, which is why they're exerting more control. They're losing power. The internet has been doing this for a long time. Bitcoin is the next discovery slash invention that is going to really take it to the next level. And the nation states and the elite and the people with money and power, a lot of them don't even really know why it's happening because they haven't dug into these things. They don't really have an incentive to do that, but it's happening. And that's why what happens when you threaten power is power responds by trying to hold on and get as much power as possible. It's like a allergic response. When power feels it's losing power, its response is to clamp down, to stop, to stave off, to control more. So these trying times are actually a sign of good. They're a sign of revolution. And I think this time, you know, I mean, hopefully I say this, hopefully, hopefully hope that this time will be a peaceful revolution. I hope Bitcoin will, you know, through its nature, because it demonetizes violence, which I don't have time to to get into today, but Bitcoin will be a way where we can have a peaceful transition, a peaceful revolution. And I think things like the internet, the decentralized nature of information now is going to do that because you can't really take a gun or a bomb and attack a few billion humans that can now all discuss behind closed doors or through VPNs or share ideas. You know, it's like the idea of like burning books. How are you going to burn digital books? You could try to ban a PDF of a book. And then like people will laugh at you. Actually, what you'll do is you'll increase its spread. You'll actually make it more anti-fragile if you attack it. That's the anti-fragile nature of things that are decentralized and the fact that information can now move at the speed of light. It's very fascinating. And Bitcoin's the same exact way. So this is a message of hope. The world is crazy around us. Whether it's vaccines, mandates, privacy, censorship, freedom, travel, I still have hope and I'm so optimistic. I may have news that's going to affect the family in a positive way that I really shouldn't share. And this is going to probably go out later. So then maybe that will become public. But I just got some great news today. And I got that news after four hours of working on the daily newsletter and feeling like I've really found my next thing. And I'm really going hard at it. I'm going hard at the podcast. And it's just such a empowering feeling when you just decide, when you like have when you know what you want to do. Because for two years, I've been meandering around, doing a bunch of stuff, kind of like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, trying to find the thing I wanted to do. And in one way or the other, I'm definitely doing Better Human Company, and I'm going to raise money through the Bitcoin Bitcoin Impact Fund, which every subscriber of the newsletter, 50% of all that revenue goes to the Bitcoin Fund. And currently right now, we're working, I say we're working with Charity Water. I haven't really approached them just yet but they kind of encourage raising money on your own. And then you talk to them when you have money and then you can fund a project. I want to fund an entire water project. Either that's we repair some wells that they've already built or we build one completely from scratch. The price range for those is between 10 and 25,000 is what they say on the website. 
I'm setting a number of $15,000. Once the impact fund reaches $15,000, well, actually 50%, so it's really got to hit, hit 30. And you can learn more about that on the show notes and over at thebetterhuman.co. Basically, when we have the funds that are going to the work, we're going to take that out of the Bitcoin treasury and get that to the organization, in this case, Charity Water, and then fund that project. And I mean, it'd be amazing if I can actually go to where they're doing the work and I can document it and we can talk about it. And I mean, they do full transparency so that every dollar that they receive towards the work actually goes right to a project and you can track where it was. You, there's like G GPS coordinates and everything that you can do, which is awesome, right? But I wanna be included a little bit more than just sending them some money. So that's really exciting. I think I'll have that money raised within a few months, especially when I really kick this off. We go to a daily show and I start promoting it more, going on other shows, et cetera. But that's what I'm focused on doing either way is a newsletter, the daily podcast, as well as the Bitcoin Impact Fund, I literally can't figure out how to say that for some reason. I keep wanting to call it the Bitcoin Freedom Fund, but that's kind of a separate thing. That's going to be a separate project. Probably the same ethos, but more about human rights and fighting things like censorship and whatever, you know. The Impact Fund is more about building things, creating things. Oh, that's actually a really good way to put it. I hadn't really thought about it that way. So it'll be a dual prong strategy. Awesome. See, when you do, you discover. It's so, so amazing. And so again, betterhuman.world or thebetterhuman.co to learn more about that and get on the daily newsletter, please. To close today's show out, there's hope. The key is to focus on yourself, focus on your finances, get your health in order. If it's not, like that should be the first thing you do. And then get your finances in order if they're not. Get your passports, get your Bitcoin, have a plan, maybe have some extra gas and water and other things for potential emergencies that can happen like that because they do even in modern environments like the one i live in in austin texas we had snow and where we had no power for a literal week and i had two young children and it was 20 degrees outside we were burning ikea an old ikea not even old it was like just something we weren't using it was an ikea wooden shelf we were burning it for firewood you couldn't even get firewood you couldn't even get two by fours at lowe's to burn for firewood that's how bad it got very quickly i mean we're talking a couple of days and then our house flooded we had to move out you want to be prepared. Trust me, I'm never going to go through that again. I promise you that because I am going to be prepared. Prepare yourself, invest in your knowledge, invest in your health, invest in Bitcoin and other assets that will help you in not only a crisis, but also just wealth generation. You have to own assets. If you're not continually acquiring assets, you're not getting wealthier. And if you think you're saving dollars, well, you should look at what the government's doing with their trillion dollar printing. Like every other day, they're talking about how they want to print more money. They're completely out of their mind. The Better Human Co., get on the newsletter. If you want to support the show, my work, anything, you go there, become a subscriber. You can offer a $5 a month donation or like $40 a year, I think it is. There's also a founding members where it's 80, it's a one time. And 40% of all that is going to go directly into the Bitcoin fund. And what's great about that is because we convert that to Bitcoin every single month, that's going to grow as well. $100 into Bitcoin now over the, my lifetime and even beyond me could potentially end up being thousands or millions of dollars that will have impact for literally generations to come. Like I want to create a model here that connects uh, Bitcoin, that connects charity nonprofit work, and that shows other NGOs and businesses and nonprofits how to use a treasury strategy using Bitcoin rather than the US dollar that keeps wasting away because of government's involvement and their monopoly and manipulation of money. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.